Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment. This is what I use. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, um, has released the uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, so the new version. Um, so I thought it was a good time to up upgrade and show you how to do it. Um, uh, but this time we are not going to do it manually. I have created an information script uh, in Bash, so we can simply run this script and have a lot of tools installed. The first thing that you want to do is to open a Windows uh, PowerShell. So this environment works either on Windows um, because we, we, I will show you how to use Windows Subsystem Linux uh, so you can run Linux commands uh, and a real Linux distribution um, or uh, on a real Linux computer, so a pure Linux distribution. So the first thing that you want to do if you are using uh, Windows 10 uh, is to enable Windows Subsystem Linux and you do it uh, by opening the PowerShell, you can type PowerShell on the search and you open the PowerShell. This is what you uh, will see. And in here, uh, what you have to type is this command here. So enable Windows option optional features online, uh, dash online, dash future name, uh, Microsoft Windows uh, subsystem Linux. This is going to enable the subsystem for Linux and then you have to reboot your system and after you do it uh, the next thing that you want to do is to uh, open the Windows Store. So you click again on the search, uh, you type Windows I mean Store, okay, you click in the store. I already have um, Ubuntu installed, but what you are going to do is simply click on the search button here on the store, uh, type Ubuntu, and then press enter. You will see um, these orange uh, icons with the Ubuntu logo, and you want to click on this on the first or on the last. I, I, I got some error uh, while trying to download this one, uh, so I suggest you to download this. Uh, version is the 20.04 uh, Ubuntu uh, distribution for Windows Subsystem Linux and the only thing that you have to do is click on the install button that will be here uh, and once the uh, download is complete you can simply click on the launch button. When you uh, click on the launch button you will see this Windows uh, opening. Um, now, um, the first time you open the window, this uh, you launch the Ubuntu 20.04, uh, you will be asked uh, for a username and password, uh, and then retype the password, so you type the password twice. Uh, so just follow the instruction, it's really simple, it's really straightforward, you cannot um, uh, do it wrong. Um, then you will see this uh, screen that I have here. And now we are going to download the script that I made, the automation script that I made from my Bitbucket account. The script is free, you can download it for free. It's open source. So you only have to click on bitbucket.org and follow this link. I will leave uh, the link in the description of the video. You will see this uh, screen the first time that you visit the page. And then you click on the clone button and then you copy this link or either you can manually type it. Once you do it, you come here and yeah, you, not, you need to type it probably. So let's open it side by side so we can have a reference for the link that we need to type. So you only have to do this once and then the installation process will install a bunch of software, uh, everything that you really need, um, or at least what I use. Uh, okay, now um, you just type 
Git because Git is uh, it's here by default, so you already have Git installed, so you will be able to use it. Uh, if you don't know what Git is, uh, that might be um, good for another video, so I won't cover it uh, now. So you just type what I tell you, Git clone, and then the link uh, that you see here. So https uh, um, semicolon uh, slash slash bit bucket dot org slash f b h double o d and then environment setup script dot git and then what you want to do is um, clone it in a folder on your uh, on the own directory of your uh, computer. In this case, on the Linux distribution. So you just type setup script, uh, yes, like that, and this will clone all the files of this repository inside the setup script. So if you type ls setup script or lowercase you will see that there are two files inside so environment.sh is the file that you need uh, what I'm gonna do is just uh, move the file in the home folder uh, I mean copy it uh, so set up script slash environment dot sh and I will call it setup script. Um, so I will give it another name. So I will call it setup script.sh, but you can uh, also give it the same name. I mean, environment.sh. Okay. This way, the script is here, available for you to use. Um, so it's environment.sh you just type dot forward slash environment dot sh and the program will start you will be asked for the password you just type it and then the installation process starts and during the steps uh, it will ask you for confirmation whether you want to uh, install um, the packages that it suggests you to do uh, to install or not you can in this case I'm going to press N for no because I already have in this environment uh, installed everything using this script but you should um, press every time yes so um, do I um, so it will um, install everything that you need uh, all the different packages. I'm going to skip everything so I just show you the entire uh, process until the end and just show you what it does. So the first step it does is update and upgrade the distribution in case it needs. Then uh, we will install PHP 7.4, the latest one. Uh, I'm going to skip again because I already have everything. So I'm aborting some of these um, steps but you should press yes every time so I see here it tells you that this is installing the network manager and other tools um, then nginx again press no but you have to press yes and then mysql um, then again no because Everything is already there. And then the Redis server and some PHP extensions for Redis. And then this is going to install Composer. And if you watch carefully, he will also uh, output the result of calling the Composer command. So you see that it works. So Composer commands is here. And then he's installing Laravel. And the list of all the uh, software and packages and modules that this script installs is here. 
So in the Bitbucket repository, you can read it. There are two, two ways to run the script. The first way is the one I show you. This one, the second way is by uh, typing two greater than sign and errors.txt or whatever you want to put here. And this will uh, redirect the error streams. So we'll uh, write all the errors inside this file. And uh, so you can refer to them later on. And as you see here, uh, we have installed successfully Laravel and then we run it. So we see that it works. Then here we want to install WordPress command line. And then he's asking you for the password. And then it's installing um, SVN, the version control that it's used uh, for uh, publishing uh, plugins or teams on the official WordPress repository. Uh, again, I type no, here is this everything already in place. Now it runs uh, SVN help, so you see that SVN works and it output this message. Uh, so SVN version, everything okay. And then now it's installing valid, valid Linux. Because as I said, I'm using a Linux distribution inside Windows. So this is what I do. Um, so here it's telling valid and it uh, outputs the valid version and you say the installation is complete. And then here uh, we have another command, yet yeah, valid, and then valid minus V, which says that everything is okay. We can press again, is it installing now Node.js? And again, it asks you for a password. My, okay. And then again, he asks you if you want to continue. And here it will tell you how um, uh, much space it will um, uh, need from the disk. Uh, so from your computer and you can type yes or no, but you should type yes if you have never installed all this software before. So if the distribution, if you're following the video, you should press yes. I am skipping all them. So you can just watch the entire process in a bit instead of taking ages. And now it says everything is okay. He, is, uh, he has installed Node and NPM, and these are the versions of NPM and Node. Uh, you can upgrade them if you need. Uh, then here is installing Yarn, and then it outputs the version of Yarn and says Yarn minus V for the version is the command that you type to get the version uh, of this uh, software and says everything's okay. And then here is installing view and view command line. Takes a minute for that. And then after view, we have Python, I guess. This list is not in the same order of the script, but just to give you a list of all the things that you will find in the environment, including some uh, Python modules like Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook that if you are about that, if you are using um, Windows Subsystem Linux, you should install Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab using the Windows PowerShell uh, by typing pip install uh, Jupyter Lab and pip install uh, Notebook. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, view command line is, is ready to go, and now it's installing Vagrant in case you want to uh, run virtual machines. Together with Vagrant, you will need a virtual box. So here it outputs a message and it tells you that you need to install virtual box if you plan to use Vagrant. But Vagrant is installed and the version is 2.2.6 and Vagrant minus V for the version uh, returned everything is okay. And now is installing pip the package manager of Python. So it's going to install pip3. Uh, I just type no, but you have to type yes, as I said. Just type the Y. 
and then everything is okay. Pip minus uh, pip three minus v returns okay uh, because this is the version of Python and the version of pip. And here it says the order requirements are already satisfied because I already installed everything. And after it finish, he tells you done. And the uh, if you uh, terminal commands that you can run. Let's do that together now. So now you can type um, php minus h and you will get the help uh, prompt, uh, the help um, in the prompt you will see the help um, of this command and then you can type here laravel and you will see it help or composer and you will see all the composer commands that you can run what else um, view you can run view you can also run view ui and you will uh, immediately see the view user interface when it starts so it starts here and here we go we got this nice user interface to create new view projects and you press ctrl uh, c to exit ctrl c said ctrl z uh, so clear and what else you can run let's see um of course you have mysql apache and svn um node.js npm the package manager so let's see uh if you type npm you got you got it of course you got npm and it says how you should use it so you need to type npm and the rest of the command to make it work and allow the package that you need uh, or what I said uh, MySQL you can type MySQL minus view and then you log in as a root and here you are inside the MySQL database and it's the version 8.0.20 uh, you can exit this way and here you have also Apache you can type a server Apache to status to see the status of Apache. Apache in this case is not running. You can press, you can uh, type start and start it. If you encounter any error, you just debug uh, the installation and you configure Apache. But you also have Nginx. It's everything here ready. So service nginx status. Now nginx is now running, but as I said for the Apache, you just need to start it and configure it. Uh, we have uh, so the web server, we have the MySQL database, of course, we also have Python 3 ready to go. And some modules like the requests module module. to make HTTP requests, uh, so it's ready to go, but also other modules from the scientific distribution of uh, Python, so you can uh, play with them uh, for that analysis. Then what else? We have Node. Let me exit. You have node, you type node and you are immediately here in the uh, node shell, then ready server. You of course need to configure some of this stuff, uh, but the installation just takes uh, roughly, depending on your uh, connection speed, it could take like 30 minutes uh, or probably more. 
because it's, it goes through a lot of different uh, software to install. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, one more thing that I suggest you um, to do, uh, that's at least what I have in my own environment, is to install some of these softwares. Uh, so Visual Studio Code is the IDE that I use. I'll show you how it looks like. So this is the IDE. Uh, you can install it from um, following the link that I leave uh, for you in the description or by visiting this, this blog post. Uh, the blog post is also linked in here. So you can just click here and you will be redirected immediately here to the article of this um, tutorial. And you can click here and you will be redirected to the official website where you can download Visual Studio, VirtualBox, MySQL Workbench to work with databases, Acrylic DNS for the, that it's useful uh, if you need to, um, uh, you, you use it together with Valid Linux, and then you can download Postman for APIs and Slack and Zoom for communication. And Docker, in case you want to install Docker, you will need to uh, upgrade your Windows 10 version, and then you can follow the documentation. Uh, and all the links are here uh, in this article. Uh, I suggest you to. Um, Check also the previous article that I wrote about the development environment for uh, Laravel of WordPress. The, that was using, I was using uh, Ubuntu 18.04, um, but some of the steps like setting up and installing Acrylic DNS, uh, you should definitely look at them. Uh, for the rest, it's pretty much uh, it. Um, the environment is ready to go. You can, um, where is, you can now play with it. Let's close this so we don't need it. You can now play with it and install everything that you need from Laravel installation or WordPress websites. You will need to make some configuration. If you, uh, if you have any problem, uh, feel free to get in touch either um, in the comment section of the YouTube video or by simply uh, reaching me uh, from here, you can click the contact, uh, you can visit the contact page on my website and just fill the form and get in touch with me. I will reply to you as soon as I can. Um, so yes, that's it. Um, have a good day, stay safe, take care, stay at home and save your ass. Cheers.